welcome to my new gardening series on Mikey Likes It. Uh, let me show you around real quick of what we got going on here. Don't mind the mess. This is only about eh, two weeks, two and a half weeks. I mean, there's a there's a lot going on here. There's a lot still to do, but it's what we got so far. Got some corn down here. Yes, I put uh, self-watering misters all over the place. Okay, there's beans right here. It's not doing too well. Trinidad scorpions, they're okay. Same way down here, some more Trinidad scorpions. You know, some more misters all the way across. Yep. And these are the red ghost peppers. They're not that old. You know, maybe, I don't know, a month, a little over a month. But if you look, they're already producing flowers. That's crazy. These things are growing like nuts. Then we come down here. All three of these are Carolina Reapers. And they're probably three months old. But look at all those beautiful buds all over the place. Every one of these are going to turn into flowers. And they're going to produce. Look at them. They're all over. There's about three in each cluster. That one's coming out pretty good. They're everywhere. It's amazing. It's very simple. Down here in central Florida, they love the heat. They're just growing nuts. And all they're growing is in, you know, five gallon buckets. That's all you need. It's a little tomato, a little cherry tomato. Not doing too bad. Here's another cherry tomato. Don't mind the white stuff. I had some aphids on there. Sprayed it with uh, diatomaceous earth. Keep the bugs off of there. It's too hot right now for it to flower. I mean, it's the heat index is about 110 degrees. So there's flowering, but the pollen is just all... It's, it's like a wet putty so it's not a dust anymore they're kind of just sticking together so it's not going to pollinate this is kind of the screened in young plants uh, germination station if you want to call it and I got some squash it's doing pretty well you know it's probably hmm, less than two months old it's quite a few buds right there about ready to flower jade beans another jade beans that bugs attacked so all the leaves fell off let's see if we get a better view yep right there there let's unclip it so we can get a better look bell peppers Wait until they get a little bigger. I'm going to transplant those. But today what we're going to do is I'm going to use the hydroponics floor grow series. And set up my little trimming that I did off of the cherry tomatoes. It has some roots growing there right there. I threw it in some rock wool in it. It seems to be doing pretty decent. I mean, there's roots popping out. There's roots on the bottom, out the side. So, I'm going to do another hydroponic series here. Simple, easy. And this is the reason why. This tomato plant right here. Let's see if I get a tape measure. Look at that tomato. A cherry tomato okay it's about 15 inches tall it's the same age as this one grown in soil that's seven and a half huge difference when it's in soil it has the the roots have to break the soil down and find the nutrients and get it out of there with hydroponics the nutrients is steadily available right there look at those roots 
That's ridiculous. I see the difference between that one and this one. How those roots are longer. Well, the, the plant's taller, but they were both the same size. So what I did was I took this one and I sank it down in the net cup a little deeper. And you look at the massive amount of roots that are coming off of it versus the length of those. So we'll see which one produces more when they fruit. Yeah, I have an air stone down in there. Keep everything mixed up. It's all running off of the air pump. It's pretty quiet. You can't even hear it. You know, it's a big commercial air pump. You know, it has six valves. You can shut them off. You can regulate the flow and everything. But you could use any container for hydroponics. Any container you want. So what I'm using is this. It's about a two-gallon container. You know, it had, uh, you know, like uh, you go to the health food places, you know, or the gym or something like that. And it's, uh, you know, the, the whey protein containers, you know. So what you do is you fill it with water, drill a hole through the cap, right, for whatever size net cup you want. And what you do is fill it with water so that the water level is just over the bottom like that okay and then we need to add our chemicals I like to use this it's a three millimeter syringe style you know there's no needle or anything on the top but it's three milliliters it's more accurate you want uh, some fresh water to rinse everything off you know because you can't mix the chemicals together so you want to do one at a time and then rinse off your measuring device every time you switch to a different container if you mix them all together it's going to neutral lock the system so each uh, nutrients in each bottle will actually bind to each other if you don't dilute them separately and then it's just a waste the plant cannot remove the nutrients it's all the, they're all locked together so you do one at a time. So in a two gallon, two gallon container, we'll take the net cup out. All right, if you read this, it says, uh, well, for cuttings and seedlings, I think we're gonna skip that one because it looks to be doing pretty well. So we're gonna do general purpose. So we're going to do one teaspoon per gallon. Second one, the micro, the flora micro is one, and the flora bloom is one. So you do all three of them. One teaspoon, if you look down here in the bottom, here's the uh, conversion chart. Teaspoon equals five milliliters. So this is three milliliters. So we're going to do one and a half. Give it a little shake. Three milliliters. Right down the water. That's it. Oop, spilt some. No big deal. Grab my stir stick. So you want to mix it up every time. Mix it up really well. Just using a bamboo stick. You use anything to mix it up. All right, next one. We're gonna do one of that. So another five milliliters. It off. 
very important that you rinse it off every time. You don't want to end up neutral locking all the nutrients there. Five milliliters. I wrapped it in tin foil to kind of deflect the sun off of it because the container was black. You know, even even though it's underneath a greenhouse, believe it or not, that there's quite a bit of sun that comes through here. The plants seem to be doing just healthy, regardless of how much sun you think comes through here. The sun does come in at angles, so. All right, once you have all the solution mixed up, okay, you take a three inch net cup drop it in there that's perfect that level is perfect right there now this I put in rock wool to start so we're gonna it's a little big so we're gonna use a small two inch one we're gonna pop it in there like that we're gonna run an air stone in this with the air pump You want to run, run that tube through the bottom of the net cup like that. Pull it on down a little too far. Yep, run it down about there. Throw the stone on. drop it into place perfect grab your small net cup drop it in there just like that and to, and to prevent algae if you want to you know you could throw something over the over the top of this you know to prevent the Sun hitting it and creating algae in there you can use the clay pebbles for hydroponics. They work very well. Just grab, grab a handful of clay pebbles and just start covering it up. That's it. That's all you have to do. Pretty simple. You know, you just leave that alone and let it grow.